trees they are singing to the tune of a song and the wind is gently ringing the bell that brings the morning welcome of the dawn Hello everyone, welcome to a new vlog. If you're new here, my name is April and I am a struggling writer documenting my struggling journey on YouTube. And yeah, today I just wanted to chat about the projects that I'm currently working on because as this is a writing channel, I probably should talk about my writing again. <laughs> and I didn't mention them in my last vlog, so that's what this one's for. So it is Thursday, June 6th, I think. Yeah, June 6th, I'm home a little early today. Uh, there was a retirement party for one of my old co-workers at another building, so I just took off so I could go to the party and then I just left. <laughs> but yeah, and so I'm home a little early, have some time, and that's good because I have over 5,000 words in here in my AlphaSmart that I need to transfer to my computer. It's across both of my projects because, that's right, I am working on two projects at once, which is brand new for me. I know plenty of other writers who work on multiple projects and I've never been able to do that. I used to think that I just didn't have the brain power for it to switch between projects because if I am focused on one project, but I try to dedicate brain space and energy to a different project, I was always terrified that I would lose anything that I had for the other part, the first project. So it was, it was something that I never did because I was kind of afraid of it and I just didn't think that it would work out for the kind of writer that I am. But I've been doing it for about a week now, maybe two, and I'm having fun. Um, I can't say how sustainable it is for me, but I think because these are zero drafts and using my Alpha Smart, it doesn't feel real, I guess, because it's so obviously unpolished. You know, there's no formatting or anything, so it's it's very obviously unpolished. And I think that's helping my brain, like, like it's helping me wrap my brain around the fact that it's a zero draft. And that's made it a little easier for me to write to, you know, concurrent projects. Is that the right word? I like the sound of that word, but I'm not sure if it's right. I use all of my brain power for writing, not for talking. But yeah, so I'm having fun with it. And it's it's kind of fun when I turn on my Alpha Smart to think to myself like, what file am I opening today? And it's been fun to, if I finish like a scene in one story and maybe I just don't feel like moving on with the next scene, I can kind of just jump into the other project. And you know, it's, it's a way for me to take a break from one project, but still be creative and flex my writing muscle. So I'm enjoying it. Uh, like I said, I don't know how sustainable it is, but I'm enjoying it. Um, so yeah. I'm gonna get these words transferring and I guess I will talk about the the projects. Uh, I'm a little embarrassed about one of them, but you know, you'll you'll find you'll figure out why. And if you've been here, you'll you'll know why. <laughs> so the first project that I'm working on is the reboot of Pine Hollow. I've finally started it. If you're new here, Pine Hollow was a series of what my friend Dolores Medill coined Cozy Werewolf Smut. It was an erotic romance slash romantic erotica about a small town and werewolves and faded mates. And I was calling it Diet Paranormal because the paranormal element wasn't the point of the story. It was the romance. And so the plan was each story in this series would be about a different couple. And I wrote the first three books in this series, actually. But after I wrote the third one, that's when I went back to the first one and I started going through all the edits and like I did, I think three or four drafts of it. Um, and then uh, it was actually just last summer that I sent it out to beta readers. I don't know why I did that. It was the first time I had ever tried beta readers. So it it did not go well. <laughs> My story, I, it was not ready to have beta readers. It still needed a lot of work, but I was just so excited about it. I was so happy because I love the characters. I loved them together, their chemistry. And so I was just so excited to share it with people. And it wasn't until after I started getting feedback that I was like, shit, there's all of these glaring problems with it. And I was, I was just so embarrassed. So I put it on the back burner, but I've been thinking about it a lot lately. And I listened to the playlist I made on Spotify and I thought, 
I need to get back into this. So I'm making some changes in the story. In the original story, my main character, Poppy, she moves to this small town because she's inherited this cozy little house from her grandmother who has passed. However, the biggest change that I am making in this new version is that her grandmother isn't dead and her grandmother is um, just an active character in this story now and she's actually really fun to write and I'm loving writing her and Poppy's interactions. I just, I think it can be a really cute relationship. So I'm kind of excited that Poppy's grandmother is alive in this version. And the second major change currently is how I'm handling the point of view. So in my original version of this story, I did alternating points of view, which is of course fairly common now in romances. Um, So the other point of view was her love interest, Jackson. And when I was writing my short erotica stories for Amazon, which embarrassed me, I will share with some of my closest friends, but I'm kind of I'm still very scared to share that, but I was writing those short eroticas and a method that worked for me was finishing the short story in one point of view and then rewriting the story from the other character's point of view and then fitting the points of view together like puzzle pieces. And I'm not going to do that for this story because it's it's probably going to be much, much longer, probably more close to novel length. But I figure I can write the whole story from Poppy's point of view, and then when there are scenes that are better suited for Jackson, or if I need to add scenes just to kind of show what he's doing, that's something I can do after the fact, and I can weave that into the narrative and make it work that way. And I just think that'll be easier for me. Um, I've also kind of dialed back Jackson's issues, because I think I, I was just trying too hard with his issues, and honestly, I don't care. I don't care. Like, not everybody needs to be a broken person that needs to heal over the course of a, a romance novel. <laughs> so yeah, that those are the major changes. And I, I just finished chapter three yesterday. I haven't written anything for Pine Hollow today, but I finished chapter three yesterday. If we are looking at the Romancing the Beat beat sheet, which is one of my favorites, I am currently in the first No Way beat, which... When you put Romancing the Beat side by side with the Save the Cat beat sheet, that is the debate beat. And funnily enough, that's also the beat that I am currently in in my second project. So Pine Hollow is the first, and my second project is currently tentatively called Project Matcha Latte because the meat cute involves a spilled matcha latte. And I do have a real legit title in mind for this story, but I'm not sure about it. And it was just cuter to call it Project Matcha Latte. So it is a contemporary queer romance about a really cool and hot non-binary barista and the neurotic, undiagnosed, autistic weirdo who falls in love with them. I'm not as confident in this story as I am Pine Hollow, but I'm having fun with it. And today I finished chapter two in that story. So yeah, those are those are my projects and I'm enjoying them. I, I always love the characters I create and I know that sounds so arrogant, but I just love my characters and that's why I write. I know a lot of people write because they like world building or they like to show, excuse me, certain themes, but for me it always is just characters. I just am obsessed with creating characters, with fleshing them out. I'm obsessed with writing dialogue and showing characters interacting with each other. It's just my absolute favorite thing about writing. So yeah, that was the update, I guess. I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be, but I feel like I thought it would take me longer to ramble about these projects and it didn't. (laughs) But yeah, so Pine Hollow and Project Matcha Latte. I feel like the second one is probably just gonna end up being like a for me story that I don't do anything with. But like I said, I'm having fun with it. I don't normally write just like straight up contemporary romance because I guess I feel like it's not one of my strengths. I feel like when you write contemporary, you have to be like really 
really good at writing like comedy for a rom-com or just drama and I'm not good at those so it's easier for me to throw in magical elements and paranormal elements versus a rom-com which I would love to write I would love to be able to write rom-coms but I'm not I'm not that funny I'm the kind of funny where it's like I can quote something in a situation and it's the right quote for the moment you know what I mean so it is what it is so I don't normally write contemporary. I'm happier writing about things like werewolves or vampires or shit like that. But yeah, we'll see where it goes, I guess. So I'm going to get off of here. I'm not sure what my next video will be about. I will probably try to get back to like weekly writing vlogs. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see. So yeah, thank you for joining me and sticking around to see what my two current projects are. If you were one of my beta readers for the original Pine Hollow, shut up. No, you weren't. You weren't there. It doesn't exist. It is forgotten. Remove that from your memory because uh, this new version will be better. <laughs> so yeah, thank you again for being here. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.